Uh, Cam, uh, what do you think is maybe the biggest takeaway from Journey to Babel when we're talking about what the Tellarites represent for us on screen here? Well, to me, it's, you know, they completely sell what this species is about in so little screen time. You know, Star Trek loves its Klingons. And when we look at the Klingons in TOS, they are not refined. Like, tell me, what is the hook of Klingons in TOS? Uh, well, they're they're supposed to kind of represent the Soviet Union, right? Right. But we don't have any of the warrior stuff, like all yeah. of the uh, sort of the complexity and the the hooks that people really latch onto with Klingons doesn't exist in TOS, right? Yeah. And yet Klingons get tons of screen time, whereas we get the Tellarites, where they have that species fairly well established out of the gate, and yet seem very uninterested in doing more with them. Yeah, what, do you have any I don't know, theories as to why they returned to the Klingons throughout the original series, but I don't know, beyond being in the background, that they did they only did one episode of the Tellarites that was focused on them. It's really baffling because, I mean, they also, you know, go back to the Orions a few times. Yep. They go back to uh, the Andorians. But... Yeah, the Tellarites just seem again. The the Tellarites are like the redheaded stepchildren of the initial alliance. Like, here's the thing: I, it, they're they've got everything going for them. They're, they're established as an important species, one of the four founding members of the Federation. They've got a badass look. They're very distinct. It, it just seems as if everything was lined up to bring them back throughout the series, and it just never came to fruition. And uh, to this day, I'm a little, uh, you know, a little hurt. You know, why do you think it could have been? What do you think it maybe was about the Tellarites that didn't make them as appealing to, you know, prospective writers as some of these other aliens? Do you think it's maybe their complaints about the look that they're a little maybe too frightening for children or something? Oh, I never really thought about they, they that. They are pretty, like, spooky looking. Like, I here, my first introduction to the Tellarites was actually thumbing through my Star Trek encyclopedia and looking at the image of the ambassador, uh, that freaked me out as a kid. Like, oh, really? Had, well, he had, like, no eyeballs that you could discern. <laughs> it, like, he looked scary. Right, right. So, it's possible. Look, look, this is back in the day where they thought that uh, Spock the Vulcan looked too demonic. And yeah. so they they airbrushed his ears so he wouldn't look like uh, Beelzebub, you know? I wonder if also the Andorians and the Orions have more of a like colorful kind of fun look whereas i don't know that i would say the tellarites are particularly fun looking well yeah it's not like they're neon blue or green or anything like that they're... they don't look as splashy you know in that you know bright colors of uh you know the, the type of film they were using at that point on these brand new color tvs i don't know that a tellarite is going to sell color television no